The fly I'd like to tie for you today is the white wabbit, which is an intriguing fly to me because it has a reflective glow, an inner glow quality to it, and a transparency, translucency effect, a halo of fur. So the very buggy, fishy pattern that I like to use as a follow-up to other patterns or behind other anglers who may be using something entirely different. So I'm starting off just mounting, getting the thread started on the bobbin and keeping it flat. I'm going to wind my way down to a tie-off point. For the tail, let's uh, select three or four strands of a part that's really nicely modeled. It's a very nice modeling in here. So I, I extend the coctalone fibers off from the tail, line up the tips, make sure everything's nice in alignment, measure out where I want to mount in, pop away the stem, and pop that down. I'll do one more turn. Let's measure that for length. About there, maybe. Eh. Throw it wrap under. That helps to cock that up. Throw it wrap over. And then we'll wind all the way back up towards the front. Trim away the excess. Now what we want to do is with our body glass, take the end there. It's already cut. Let's show you. So you have a blunt end. What you want to do is get a really long taper cut into the end of this material like that. You see that that's yeah, probably a quarter inch long for that taper. Get your thread flattened. And I'm going to come back. We're going to And as I'm winding my way back, I'm increasing the tension. So now you have a base. I'm going to throw in some white thread. So I'm going to start up here. Just get that started. And we'll tie that down. This white thread here is where my ribbing is going to be starting. That's no big deal. Do an underbody, give it a little bit of some subtle reflect. This is that Sabai tinsel, the uh, pearl blue. One, two, three. I don't like to cut things, so see that tag end? Let's just fold that tag end over and wrap over it, and that will just tie that down. So you can just throw in some rough wraps. It doesn't have to be pretty. You're just going to cover all this up over with anyway. So these hooks are so slippery. OK, so with that, we're going to pull tight. And I'm going to start with a very thin spiral. And as I'm winding forward, I'm relaxing the tension. Each turn gets fatter and fatter to the point where I'm at this point. I'm doing all over wraps. That's four, five, six, one, two, three in front. Do that because the gel spun thread, you need to have a few extra wraps in there. And if you want to get really techy about it, let's throw a whip finish in there just to secure that. We're not going to need either of these anymore, so we're going to clip that thread and off. So now we have kind of like this nice aquamarine blue. We'll take our other thread, you know, get, some, get it kind of tacky with some tacky wax and some white rabbit fur. Just start. Building a loose, and you want a little extra on there, loosely. 
because a lot of this is just going to get pulled away as we do the next step. So, yeah. I like to create a little bit of a matting effect. You can roll back and forth. So there, you have a little dubbing noodle like that as one of my inspirations would call it. Um, and I'm just placing these between the spaces of the of that um, ribbing. And this is the Dark Spike Blend Squirrel Blend. I put that on everything. Don't need a lot. I'm just going to show you how I prepare this. See that? It's like a little wadding. I'm just pinching and wadding that up right around the bead. Just kind of like doing to your hair. Loose wrap, tighten it up, one, two, three, it's tight. Pull that all back, go in front, pinch away extra. Now just, I go forward, I'm trying to avoid the bead because you can scrape the lamination off the bead or the coating off, whether it's painted or anodized, metallic or not. You can do a wire brush and just... There you have, real simple, little white wabbit.